Hi everyone, welcome to our discussion today, which is going to center on the benefits of becoming a Canadian permanent resident. Many people ask us, what can I expect once I permanently move to Canada? So the first uh, subject that comes to mind is, of course, Canada being quite large, 10 provinces, three territories, what are your rights in terms of where you have to live? So the first that comes to mind is your mobility rights. When you become a Canadian permanent resident, you're entitled to live anywhere in Canada for the purposes of becoming employed. And that allows you to move freely amongst the provinces. I guess one of the important caveats, one of the important considerations is when you are expressing an interest to move in one particular area of the country, you have to be truthful. And so you're going to want to move to that province or initially settle in that province, but subsequently freedom of mobility will allow you to move anywhere you want in Canada. What's not a good idea is to target a specific area of the country. If that particular province selects you, it's not suitable if you actually move to another province right from the start. So it's very important to get it right in the beginning, but freedom of mobility is an important consideration. And once you become a Canadian permanent resident, you can move freely anywhere in Canada if it's done properly. Another important benefit is education from the point of view, of course, of children. So once you become a Canadian permanent resident, everyone up to the age of 18 is permitted to go to a Canadian publicly funded school system. So that obviously is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, what Canadian permanent residence doesn't uh, allow, of course, is uh, post-secondary education is not free. There are obviously costs involved and individuals who want to pursue post-secondary education, of course, they are going to have to pay for that higher level learning. Uh, what's interesting though, however, is that the costs of a uh, education in post-secondary are considerably lower if you're a Canadian permanent resident than if you're a foreign student. So many people want to become Canadian permanent residents uh, in terms of the cost of education, obviously considerably cheaper uh, as a PR versus if you're a foreign student. Uh, just as an example, if you went to McGill University, the tuition fees uh, for a Quebec resident uh, would be uh, about $2,500 if you're a Canadian uh, permanent resident or a Canadian citizen. Uh, versus if you're an international student, the cost would be close to $18,000. So the, the difference, of course, is enormous. And obviously, being a Canadian permanent resident affords you uh, considerable advantages in pursuing higher education. Another area that's obviously important once you become a Canadian permanent resident is you have access to our universal health care coverage. Now, uh, for most uh, individuals, there is a consideration as to when you begin to qualify for our universal health care coverage. Now, there are no waiting period. There's no period that you have to acclimatize and wait for six provinces. Uh, those include Alberta, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland Labrador. Those six provinces, no waiting period whatsoever. For the remaining four provinces, uh, there is a waiting period generally, it's three months. So we often encourage individuals to have uh, insurances with third party providers uh, in place. We have an excellent piece on our website that covers all of the dynamics and metrics involved in acquiring uh, healthcare coverage uh, if you are visiting Canada or if you are moving to, let's say, Ontario or Quebec, where there is a, a waiting period. Another area that's important, of course, is taxation. Uh, in Canada, becoming a resident, uh, it, it, it triggers, once you become a permanent resident, this will trigger, uh, obviously, income tax payment requirements. Uh, taxation in Canada is based on residence, not citizenship. Uh, unlike, for example, the United States, where uh, citizenship is the test for whether you continue uh, to be uh, taxed 
to the uh, US government. Uh, taxation in Canada is based on residence and you're taxed on your worldwide income. Uh, it's important to also know you're not taxed on the assets that you would bring to Canada. So there's no, there's no benefit uh, in thinking that you're bringing assets to Canada, therefore you're going to lose some of those assets uh, to the Canadian government in some form of taxation. That is, that is not the case. Now, in Canada, our taxation system, we have a, a marginal taxation system. First of all, it's marginal and it's shared between the federal government and the provinces. So each jurisdiction will have uh, its tax requirements and it's based on uh, a marginal taxation system. What does that mean? It means that your first level of earnings will be taxed at a certain rate. Every amount over that particular threshold will have a different rate and suc each successive marginal increase in income tax will have a, a particular rate of taxation. Naturally, the two provincial and federal go together and that would be your total uh, taxation bill uh, on an annual basis. Um, so it's important to understand, we cover this as well on our website, um, what are the rates of taxation uh, from the both provincial and the federal jurisdiction. It's also important to note, as a Canadian permanent resident, there is retirement, old age security, and what's called a guaranteed income supplement. That is really uh, for people who uh, are in the low income thresholds. Uh, it's limited to persons who, who don't earn a, a lot and they're, they haven't saved very much and they need these uh, payments, which could come to about $1,000 a month, depending on what your income t uh, is, your annual income is, uh, if you're in a uh, relationship, if you're married uh, with a partner or such, uh, the income from the combined uh, family uh, will be taken into consideration uh, to determine if you uh, are qualifying to receive the maximum retirement, old age security, and guaranteed income supplement. Of course, one of the most important benefits of becoming a Canadian permanent resident is the right to become a Canadian citizen. So we do have naturalization, that's a period of residence that one can then apply for Canadian citizenship. In Canada, as you may know, there's the requirement to have three years of physical residence in the f preceding five years prior to submitting the application. And if you are the between the ages of 18 and 54, you must also pass a language test. Most importantly, one of the important considerations in becoming a Canadian permanent resident is the quality of life that Canada offers over so many other countries. In fact, in the most recent report, uh, US News and World Report's rankings, these very credible ranking on a many different categories, uh, there's a quality of life index. And Canada, no surprise, is ranked number one for 2018. Uh, Canada was first with Sweden, Denmark, and Norway following. And of course, they measure a broad metric of categories. And in terms of the overall ranking, Canada was uh, on top uh, in this particular. So, you know, there's a security issue, there's a citizenship, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, all kinds of different categories are e measured and Canada uh, in this past year and in previous years were generally in the top uh, five in terms of overall quality of life index. So that's really an important consideration that is very hard to quantify, but it's obviously something that one feels in terms of where you live in Canada, what you're looking to do in, in terms of your overall plans. And obviously, if you are in the age group of 25 to 55, uh, employment will be an important consideration. Good news, obviously, Canada's in the throes of excellent economic performance in these recent times. Uh, the job market in Canada is the best in decades. Uh, it's interesting to know that 71%, uh, I should say that newcomers to Canada uh, have a 
71% employment rate when looking at the past five years. And this is an age group of 25 to 54. So immigrants who've come to Canada in the previous five years, if you're between the ages of 25 and 54, the reality is you have a 71%, 71 percent of that group are considered employed in the Canadian labor market. That represents the highest performance of immigrants to Canada since nine, since 2006. So, uh, you know, the, the numbers are, are very interesting uh, and that in, in, in part explains why Canada will be uh, admitting this year, 2019, more than 300,000 immigrants. Uh, it is, in more, more importantly, this trend of increased numbers uh, is expected to continue well into the next three years so that by 2021 the Canadian government has forecast uh, well over 1 million newcomers to be admitted to Canada as Canadian permanent residents. So that is generally the, the broad benefits of becoming a Canadian permanent resident, excellent job market, number one quality of life in the uh, most important indicator, and in addition, all the other benefits uh, that we call benefits in terms of becoming a Canadian permanent resident. That covers the uh, subject matter that we wanted to discuss today. Uh, just a short note, Facebook, like us, follow us. Uh, individuals who retain us uh, on a personal level. We have an excellent job search that we include for all our clients who have retained us from a, 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 an individual point of view. Uh, stay in touch with us. Our next live stream will be obviously in July. See you soon. Thanks so much.